like in many occasions when we speak um, from a common goal perspective with with professional athletes, both both male and female, um, what we hear is that um, there is an, a, a huge appetite and hunger to actually get on, we may call it a purpose journey, um, because it's not just about like feeling um, um, disenfranchised um, as a player or, or not um, allowed to actually um, have an opinion, but it's also that um, there hasn't been a, a consistent education for the players or a, a, a consistent um, accompanying of the players throughout um, their growing up in football that would allow them to actually get to the core of what their purpose is about to understand what their purpose is and and as a consequence get on a journey to to unlock that passion and actually marry your professional football career with if you want your purpose career i think it's not too harsh to say that football has been living in a in in a, in a bubble um, um of where it didn't have to question itself too much because despite a financial crisis, despite crisis in reputation of some of the football's institutions, etc., it just has continued to grow, um, mostly two-digit year, year on year. Maybe now is actually the time for football actually to, to accept that it can play a leading role. Um, and not just because it's, it's the right thing to do, but it's actually a smart thing to do and move from more of a charity and giving away, giving back um, perspective on contribution to more of a DNA perspective of um, contribution and, and actually being part of the solution. So um, I think the moment is right. Um, we're in the, we're heading towards a decade of action and football is as close as it can to become an enabling force um, towards hmm. achieving actually what we have set ourselves as global goals. But the one thing which really changed me was when we decided uh, once our academy was cleared of our uh, young players to host uh, 50 women and their children who were victim of domestic violence. And the kind of stories I witnessed, the kind of uh, stories uh, that were shared with me uh, uh, totally changed the way I saw my role. And, um, and, and that was, you know, heartbreaking. Uh, and, and this is where we decided to step up our game and, uh, and really do much more, uh, not only through our foundation, which existed uh, for quite some time, but also to put impact as the center of really everything we do now. And, and so that I would say, and again, it's, it's hard to say in a club like Marseille where tens of thousands of fans expect us to win on the pitch, first and foremost. Well, I see uh, um, our responsibility outside the pitch as, as important as <clears throat> our uh, um, desire and, and willingness to win on the pitch. You know, elites, politically speaking, love to be uh, uh, photographed with players, but they don't value them. I don't believe they respect them. I don't believe they really want to, uh, uh, you know, think about some long-term uh, projects with players. Uh, and, and this is kind of the mindset we need to change. And this is kind of the discussion we need to start with players. Uh, um, letting them, you know, the opportunity to to imagine, uh, to think about where they believe they should, you know, commit or, or be engaged. Uh, this is, I think, a, a, a profound undertaking, a very important undertaking that, you know, uh, should be uh, uh, one of the post-COVID world uh, uh, decisions as clubs uh, uh, we should make. And, and certainly at Olympique de Marseille, we expect to have these discussions and again, to, to change uh, uh, our way of thinking about this and to change the way players think about their social responsibility. I believe uh, for one that academies are often or often look like bunkers, right? You, you, you tend to isolate, you tend to overprotect your players because of many different reasons. 
And so, you know, as part of, of our curriculum, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, introduce sessions with people from the civil society, as we call it. Uh, uh, lawyers, social entrepreneurs, uh, journalists, uh, people from a, a very different background as the, the, the sports background and the football background to talk about their job, by the way, to talk about their mission in the world and also the issues that they see that they're faced with in each of their own uh, 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 job or, or company uh, or associations. And for us, it's going to be a way and we'll test that. Maybe we will fail. But that, that's going to be a way to, you know, open the chakra, you know, of, of these young players and, and, and maybe uh, uh, trigger some kind of, of willingness to uh, be engaged in, 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 a, in another area, very different from, from football, obviously. Uh, so we're going to try to sow these seeds uh, uh, through such, uh, you know, encounters uh, and discussions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and of course, we're, we're going to try to steer their appetite for impact. You know, let's face it, Sharon and, and Jürgen, football doesn't have a good image. Uh, um, football is the universal sport. Football is, of course, you know, the number one uh, source of entertainment uh, uh, across, uh, across the world. But let's face it, we, I don't think we have a great image. Uh, and we certainly need to improve it. And that should be very high on our agenda on our list of priorities and, uh, and, and, and even more so after the lessons learned from this pandemic and, and what as social uh, agents uh, um, we need to do uh, in our world and in our societies.